Hello. Hey. 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 hey, folks. Welcome along to this Ox Venture spin-off. How's everyone feeling? You all look amazing. The spectacular <laughs> spin-off. Spectacular. I like this. I like this <laughs> spin-off. Where nice. I'm told how amazing I look every time. We are doing an Ox Venture spin-off. It is set in Geth, the Geth that you know and love, but across the continent and far in the future. And we are playing Blades in the Dark, which is a brilliant tabletop game where you play as a fledgling gang of criminals, thieves in our case to be specific. I have made some very, very minor tweaks to the setting and the lore so that it gels a little better with our D&D escapades. But in terms of mechanics, throw your D20s in the bin. Fine, no, them down. No, no. <laughs> this is a whole throw them yeah. out of here. No, go on. The plan is each episode, two or three of our uh, daring thieves will attempt an audacious score. But as a special treat for the first session, we do have the whole gang here. Is everyone feeling good? Everyone feeling ready to begin? Yes. To submit yeah. to total immersion? <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm feeling completely unprepared, which is a nice feeling. Welcome to the farthest corner of Geth, a great many years in the future. Built where a river meets the sea and cut through with sprawling canals lies the bustling city of Volisport. Uh, the city is a concentration of wealth and of crime and of people, and of poverty, and it languishes in uncertainty because magic, which is the unseen force that since time beyond remembering has been the source of all power and knowledge in Geth, appears to be seeping out of the world. That's the point where you all go, oh. Good. Oh no, the magic. No, good. I'm trying to look brooding and criminal-like. Do that again, but also more criminal. Like, okay. Like, oh. Oh. So, no, so you've got to say the thing. Appears to be seeping out of the world. Oh. Uh, Give us your wallet. <laughs> Uh, not to worry though, because oscillatronic inventions powered by spectral energy are appearing on the scene to do some of the heavy lifting once covered by magic. Uh, but also do worry, because this energy source is only available because the city is full of ghosts. Perhaps connected to the state of magic, the spirits of the departed don't seem to actually be departing, and consequently the world is teeming with spirits, kept only partially at bay by a huge anti-ghost field that surrounds the city. It is the middle of the day, though it never gets very bright in Volusport. The factories are pumping out smoke. Great iron whaling ships are being restocked in the harbour. And in the crowded business district of Night Market, five individuals arrive at an appointed time at a small antique shop, each having been lured to the address by a mysterious letter, signed by an Eleanor. And these individuals are... Who wants to go first? I can go first if you like. You're scared. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Mike. Sure. Uh, hello. I'm Barnaby the Butcher Fortescue the Third, uh, at your service. I'm the, the third Barnaby Fortescue, not the third butcher. I'm the first butcher in my family, but the third Barnaby Fortescue. I don't like to brag, but I'm quite wealthy, actually. Uh, and I thought I'd try this crime thing, because it sounds like a bit of a lark, actually. Yeah, so looking forward to it. And Barnaby, do you wish to share uh, what was written on the letter that brought you here, or would you rather not? No, 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 no. Gentleman never tells. <laughs> Barnaby is a slide who is a sort of socially manipulative uh, person who's best uh, when they're at a party trying to um, persuade people to do things, coerce people. My name is um, is Casimir Jones. I am a criminal born and bred in Volusport. So uh, I can only assume that I've been called to this uh, this antique shop because they want a criminal. I'm, g I'm good at that bit and not much else. So I'm playing as a spider, so uh, my job is to sort of facilitate other people in doing crimes by being better criminals. Not a support class, but more just like like a, a, a sort of puppet master-esque role. But uh, I've made myself very sneaky so I can go to places where I'm not s supposed to be. Excellent. And I'm too nervous to do the voice yet, so we'll do that later. A brawny... Brawny, hench, as you can see. Uh, Dark-haired woman in an eel-skin vest approaches Night Market. Eleanor's in the Night Market. She is a former prize fighter of some renown. Uh, left, left the prize fighting circuit of the city under a cloud amidst rumors of corruption. And she has a large family to support. Lots of cousins and nieces and nephews on her mother's side. And she got a letter about possibly being able to make money by hitting people uh, outside of a prize fighting circuit. Maybe in a way that makes more money for her and less money for uh, the corrupt people um, managing that industry here in Bolisport. Zilla is a cutter, more of a hitter, but technically a cutter. <laughs> She's a fighter, a brawler. She likes to wreck stuff. She's quite amiable outside of a fight, 
but quite bloodthirsty inside of one. I am Edvard Lumiere, and I'm an inventor, a tinkerer, a maker of things that I'm fully confident would be in every household in the city were it not for the machinations of my rival, Amadeus Astor, a base, deceitful fraud who has thwarted me at every turn. In I, my mind, you're already explaining this to everyone else in the street. Yes, <laughs> because it's true, it. and I'll tell you for why. I created Sir, a safe shot. and reliable system for lighting the streets. Astor created a competing <laughs> one and had all my street lamps smashed. I invented a device for talking to people across great distances. He staged a public demonstration where he used one to beat a horse to death, and now everyone thinks they're unsafe. <laughs> we'll edit this with a series of long fades. <laughs> anyway, I come from a family of prosperous merchants. I seem to have run through the family money with my experiments, and I, I need more capital if I'm to continue with my inventions and experiments. Naturally, I need as much possible time as I can get my hands on for my experiments, so I figured a bit of crime would probably bring in the most money in the shortest amount of time. Anyway, that's what the letter I got was about, making money quickly. I am a leech who is a tinkerer, a clever saboteur, so mechanical things. That's my area of expertise. I am uh, Lilith Capellanaga, and I am from overseas. I have transferred here uh, to study in the city um, to look into ghosts. I'm very interested in all the things that are happening with the spirits in the world right now. And uh, yeah, I'm studying a PhD to try and find out what is going on? Um, it's quite I easy to look fairly... into ghosts because they're transparent, right? Like... Hey! <laughs> you look through well, them. That's just a little bit of ghost them. humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm from a fairly noble family overseas, um, but while I'm here, I'm trying to, you know, really fend for myself um, and try and pay my own way. Um, and so I got a letter basically being like, would you like some help paying towards your studies? And... Uh, I thought I'd, you know, and what what better way to get in up close with seeing all the other ghosts than, you know, following a bunch of criminals around who might attract a few or might, make a few. Might become a ghost. <laughs> yeah. And then you're already friends with them, so yeah, yeah. makes yeah. it a lot easier. It's all good. And um, I am a whisper, so I can actually commune with ghosts, which is why I've gone into that uh, line of academia. It's like if you already speak Spanish, taking Spanish at uni. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, this uh, this motley uh, group of um, of individuals is collected in the street outside uh, this antique store. Uh, in fact, you have all gone in because you found the door uh, wide open. There was a sign outside. It said, Eleanor's Largely Legal Antiques, which was painted on a wooden rocking horse sign. Uh, you're all inside now. The, the shop is full of bric-a-brac, uh, you know, vases, ornaments, things like that. Standard antiques fair. None of it looks especially valuable, but it is all covered in a, a sort of reasonably thick layer of dust. And the shop is completely empty. Until, with a terrifying bang, a door that none of you even saw at the back of the room flies open, and six uh, figures in long black cloaks hurry past. They are wearing plague masks, and you all immediately recognize them as spirit wardens the wardens of the death sent to collect corpses and dispose of them before they can turn into spirits and indeed they are carrying a corpse out of the back room uh, you all avoid eye contact with them because that's very bad luck and they rush out of the shop with the corpse you briefly catch sight of it it's a sort of portly middle-aged gentleman with white hair and um <laughs> and a surprised expression <laughs> and they uh they're out the door and they hurry away down the streets leaving um that door at the back of the shop slightly ajar you know i think probably you could improve on the way they carry those bodies some sort of electric sling <laughs> arrangement i don't know on wheels maybe yeah if you were to get some kind of electrified cage you could place the body into that, give that a push, and then it would just sort of find its own way out. It's completely lost me, friend, it. but yeah, you do mm. you do your thing, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just thought it was, it was fascinating. Also, I think that guy was dead. What? Yeah. I didn't notice, I didn't even really see. So. It was sort of a secondary thought, but yeah, pretty sure pretty sure he was dead. Mm. Are we going in? Anyway, then? should we go in? Ladies yeah. first. You enter the room, and the walls are absolutely covered with blueprints documents maps 
In the corner, um, Edvard, you particularly notice there is a workbench that is um, a wooden workbench stained with uh, alchemicals and containing some equipment. There's like a, a vice and, a, and uh, some other bits and pieces, clearly some kind of crafting bench. It's quite obvious to you, especially Casimir, that this is clearly, or was, a thieves' den. Um, is there anything in the room that I can sit on and something I can prop my leg up on? <laughs> yeah, there is. At the crafting table, there is a uh, there's there's a, a little stool there. Okay, so I kind of Casimir uh, walks with a cane, uh, and on his left leg he has uh, like a big knee brace. Um, sort of just like it's a big metal thing that keeps the limb straight so he kind of like hobbles over to um, to the stool and sits down grabs like a nearby crate or drum or something and puts his leg up on it and goes Ugh. well this seems familiar you've been here before um, chap no but I've been in countless places like it or back rooms I'd like to wander over to the workbench and start seeing what they've got equipment wise just going through yep. the drawers, seeing what the tools are like. I know is it the maps. It's uh, it's all it's all pretty um, pretty crude stuff. Hmm. Um, uh, Edvard, do you reckon that um, some of the stuff that you've got in your personal collection would be a significant improvement on uh, whatever the thieves were using in this room? As you make yourselves comfortable, you hear uh, the front door to the shop sort of swing open. There's a little bell which goes. Ding, ding, ding. And you hear three sets of footsteps um, come up behind you and moving into the back door. Turning, you see a uh, woman. You would place her in her mid-30s, uh, medium height. She has her hood up, so you can't see too much of her face, but you can see a little bit of white hair sort of poking out. And she is flanked by two absolutely enormous dudes. Uh, and she looks around at you all and surveys the room and says, Well, well, well. Hello. Making yourselves comfortable. Yeah, is this where we come to get the, the crime money? Just, crime uh, money? Yeah, I just, I would like to, if we could just get to the bit where we do the crime and get the money. It's just I need the money. Quite, quite. How much you got on you? Well, I've not, I've not got any money. That's the point. That's why I'm here. I say. Oh dear. I turn back to the bench. Oh dear, oh dear. Can I pull? She looks around the room again. Um, says, they already taken poor Bilkins. Who oh, was there was Bilkins? a, there was a dead guy who got carried out. Yeah. Oh, such a shame. I had hoped to pay my respects. Before he was taken. Probably catch but him. never mind. They weren't going very fast because they didn't have a very technologically advanced way of moving the body. I start sketching up a blueprint. Could I take a closer look at that? Mm, yeah, let me just. Uh, there you go. She looks at it. Um, uh, she does sort of appear genuinely interested. Right, that's committed to memory now. Thank you. And she screws up the piece of paper. Uh, and drops it on the floor and actually grinds it under her heel, which seems a little unnecessary. Um, she says, Clearly none of you recognise me, which is a little bit of a shame, but unfortunately there's something that I need from you all. Can you guess what it is? Uh, a drink? You sound like you could do with a drink, actually. Your voice is a bit funny. A bit funny? Yes. You think it's funny? Yes. The two large dudes step towards you. Um, Barnaby. Three, uh, three drinks? She holds out, she holds out a hand. <laughs> what do you have? Oh, it's a, well, it, 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 it's a crystal glass full of, uh, well, it's beer, but I, you know, I'm not putting my lips on a dirty tankard, so fancy a bit. Pour one out, pour out three, let's toast our new association. Absolutely, yeah, sure. I'm going to pour out wait, the drinks. Wait, 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 cool. e excuse me, madam. Who are you? Yes. Did you have something to do with these letters? And I waved the letter that I received. I've never seen that before in my life. My name's Pickett. I'm second in command of the Lamp Blacks. Perhaps you've heard of them. Oh, you yes. all have. Uh, they are a very serious and frightening gang that operates out of uh, Crowsfoot, which is a, um, a nearby district full of ne'er-do-wells. You've already met Bilkins. Well, he used to run a, a small operation out of this room. They all seem to have scarpered, though, which is a little bit of a shame because he owed me quite a lot in gambling debts. And as the nearest warm bodies to his place of business, you have now inherited that debt. Now, hold on a minute. Congratulations. Wait, wait, wait. Falling into someone else's gambling debts just because we happen to be the closest warm bodies does not seem like a job to me. Seems a bit unfair, doesn't it? Hugely. Yeah. Yeah. And she sort of looks round and goes, yeah, that's, that's life though, isn't it? 
Weird how it works. Anyway, 24 hours. He owed me eight coin. I'll meet you back here. I've seen all your faces now. I'll meet you back here. 24 hours. And if you don't have my eight coin, I'll kill you all. See, Bye. You, you don't want the drinks then. She's already downed it. Uh, she's yeah. taken the she's taken the drinks. Um, she monstered it in sort of one <laughs> impressive smooth movement, right. and she has left. Eight coin, you all are aware, is about like it's a good monthly take for a small business uh, or a very rare luxury item. And suddenly you are all in danger. It would seem of being murdered. And well, this is the opposite get. of why I came here. Yeah. You know, I got a letter, right? Yeah, yeah. about oh, making yeah. money, not. Going crime. into debt, exactly. But it, it, what a what a great excuse to do some crime, though. Should but, we do, should we do no, a crime I, or two? I mean, yeah, but I want to also find this Eleanor person and get, like, get, like, find out. Like, the whole point I came here, like, to get some cash for my for my work. And well, maybe Eleanor organised this whole thing. Maybe she's pulling the strings. You know, maybe it's a test. Yes. Mm. Oh. Yeah, paid this, actors. This this chap knows what he's talking about. Is this about. a game to you? What? You you never heard of the Lamp Blacks before? No, no. I'm assuming you've never set foot in Crow's Foot either. No, it's not really my sort of place. But I, you know, I'm giving this new thing a go. You know, got, got a bit bored. Right. Well, you're not going to be bored for the rest of Good. your life. Which, Good. if you don't start taking this more seriously, is going to be very short. Wow. Because Crow's Foot is no joke. The Lamp Blacks are no joke. A coin, maybe not to the likes of you, but certainly to people who live like I do, and the people you're going to have to rub shoulders with if you want to give this crime lark a go, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Listen, listen. Nothing bad has ever happened to me in my entire life. I don't think it's going to start hey, now. Hey, hey, Tor <laughs> Taurus, what's your name? Barnaby. Yes. Taurus, you. Yeah, hi. You, the butcher. You seem Barnaby the butcher. <laughs> we'll see. How much money do you have? Do you have eight coin? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you've got to keep well, your... job's done then. No, no, no. You've, you got right to keep your, you've got to keep your business se interests separate. You know, you can't be taking from one pot to put in the other. <laughs> Maybe you have the money, but uh, not liquid. Yes, well, it's, yeah, it's all tied up in, you know, property mainly. So we're all going to get murdered because your money's tied up in property. We won't get murdered. You're being very dramatic, I think. Would you like a drink? Yes. This is I just a temporary setback. We just need to get the eight coin and then we can carry on with oh, our plan yeah. to get more coins. So we just need to figure well, out how to get the eight coin. I could make some um, kind of coin forging machine. Let me have a look around here. <laughs> as you... Um, uh, as you look around the room, cast your eyes around in desperation, uh, you see that, uh, in fact, it looks like there is some intelligence that is useful here. It particularly catches your eyes, uh, Casimir. You are able to identify, just from a few blueprints, a uh, rich picking score from something a little more small fry. And you do notice that, actually, it looks like there are a few opportunities that are of interest. And here they are. The Cab Drivers Union is hosting their annual week-long convention starting tomorrow. Rumour is the Cleland Company is putting an incredible innovation on display this year. Meanwhile, out at sea, a large iron yacht new to the city has been anchored a short distance out to port for several days. The sounds of revelry can be heard from the shore. But then again, a mysterious artefact was recently acquired at auction by a member of the city council to be placed in her collection at her townhouse. Here, Pythons. You. He, um, he's uh, staring these... straight at, at Zilla. You want to talk to these? Go on then. <laughs> what did you think to this lot? <laughs> um, well, I'm no criminal myself, not by trade, not not originally. Right. How I many people rather... do you think you can take in a fight in one go? Oh, I mean, that's not a problem. That's the least of our problems. Least of my mm. problems, anyway. Well, you're the hardened um, crim criminal. What, what do you think sounds good? Oh, the cab drivers convention. Yeah, I heard they were going to unveil some new invention there. I was actually planning on stopping by myself to see what it was. I understand it's meant to be incredibly valuable. Mm. Does sound like a good target. What Could does it say about people. this artifact? The townhouse artifact. What is it? Is there any information about it? You scry uh, the notes a little closer. Uh, Casimir, and you see that in fact there is a little bit more written about this uh, mysterious artifact. You find out, for example, 
uh, that it's um, it's been bought by one Lizette Morriston, um, who is a member of the city council. Uh, she has a notable collection of antique toys, and this one actually sold at auction for a little less than expected, because it got something of a reputation prior to sale for making those near it feel uneasy. All right, good news and bad news. Mm-hmm. More bad news than good, really, but number one, this thing will be worth a lot. Okay. Based on who uh, who just bought it. Bad news, uh, it appears to be cursed, and the person who just bought it is one of the Council of Six. So, um, high risk, high reward. We're going to be making a real big enemy if we do this one. But mm-hmm. we'll almost certainly get at least eight coin. Plus, townhouse? I mean... What sort of security it's easier to get to than a yacht, right? A yacht is going to be out, mm. out at sea. I, I don't know. And much a convention, about there are going to be a lot of people around. Whereas Makes a townhouse, it easier to hide. Mm, that's true. Well, am I going to have to talk to cab drivers? If yeah, we do, maybe if we, we should, do the uh, cab driver thing, am I going to have to talk to them? I mean, it's what entirely kind of crime possible. did you imagine you'd be doing? Well, I don't know. Maybe you know. Ones where you get to talk to fancy society. Go to a party, folks, yeah. Um, chat some people, you know, that sort of thing. Should we start him off in the shallow end then? Oh, the yeah. kiddie pool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds great. What, sounds great. What do you think, uh, Hood? I can't. I can't make out your face. <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. Hi, I, I'm I'm Lilith. Sorry. Uh, um, yeah, it, it it really is whether we want to hide in a crowd or hide in the darkness, and it's whatever people feel most comfortable with. I'm not sure. Whether... Are you interested in a cursed artifact? Isn't that what you're after? Yeah, but we want to sell the cursed artifact. You can so look at I it wouldn't... before we sell it, for scientific purposes. I mean, I understand that. Um, th- there is a difference between ghosts and cursed artifacts. So, it's, so it might be not, you know, outside of academic <laughs> right. circles, you might not understand the difference. That's understandable. But, you know, yeah, it, it's a slightly different uh, kettle of fish. <laughs> I'm but not one I of those see... ghost whisperers. All right, fine. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh... What's a I ghost mean, it, with a kettle of fish? <laughs> Unfinished well, business. Uh, a lot of fish ghosts. If you a lot, fish lot in a kettle, of, they yeah, die. Yeah, more than you'd ghosts imagine. Come out <laughs> more, more things than you would imagine. Um, I, I'm more likely to run into ghosts at an old townhouse than at a convention centre. Um, uh, you know. I don't know. They just had the martial weapons convention last week. A lot of deaths. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, fair Always enough. Always messy, that one. When they start yeah. drinking. How are we going to make coin out of this cab driver's convention? This, this new invention that they're unveiling. You're going to sell gonna it? Worth, well, you, you could sell it. it. You could get the secret, sell it to competitors. All In sorts of industrial hours. espionage. Yeah, we need the coin by tomorrow. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm going to stop by there anyway at some point. Check it out. But I don't, yeah. I'm, I just need the money. Why don't we go to the townhouse? Mm-hmm. Done. Sounds good to me. Townhouse it is. All right, now, in Blades in the Dark, we don't need to do any more planning than that to figure out, uh, to jump us into the heist. There are just a couple of uh, oh, no. tiny details I need. What kind of score is this going to be? Uh, here are your options. Okay. Assault, do violence to a target. Deception, lure, trick, or manipulate. Stealth, trespass, unseen. Occult, engage a supernatural power. Social, negotiate, bargain, or persuade. And transport, carry cargo or people through danger, but I think it's unlikely to be that one. This is sounding to me like um, probably a stealth. Uh, Suggesting thing, stealth to me, to certainly. Mm-hmm. Around here. Hmm. I was wondering if it might be um, social, kind of trying to talk our way in because of mm. um, old uh, crystal beer over there. <laughs> there isn't Cheers. an event or anything on, though. It's a private residence. Oh, balls. Well, so, that's. I would also. I would also just note that, like, you can totally all take sort of different routes of attack. This only describes the main way mm. that you'll be going. Mm. Sneaky, feels, sneaky. Going feels sneaky, sneaky. To me. Mm. Okay. In that case, I need to know the point of infiltration. Well. Servants' entrance. Also, mm. just as a um, just as a point of interest, uh, I have been working on a few designs um, that I thought might help in the whole crime business. Um, I've got a line launcher that we could probably fire a line, get up onto the roof that way. Just an idea. I don't know much about how these things go down generally. Roof does sound pretty good, actually. 
Is there like a blueprint on the wall of this townhouse? Do we do we know what it looks like? You don't need to worry about that now. You can okay. worry about that. So later. we can assume there is some sort of like roof skylight, you know, window, something on the roof. It's time to declare how much you're carrying, which is your load. Brilliantly, uh, Blades in the Dark does not require you to figure out what you're bringing to a score beforehand. Mm -hmm. You can go super light which uh, you know doesn't look like you're carrying anything on you at all. You can go super heavy, which makes it very, very clear that you are, you know, like out for war. Mm. Uh, and you can kind of go medium in the middle. It determines how many things you can carry. And you decide at any point what you're carrying, but you can only carry so much. So you can only do that so many times. I'm going light because uh, I, I think you can be too prepared for a heist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Complicated <laughs> heist. You can be too prepared. That is a... Yeah. That is such a that is such a take, Barnaby. Um, <laughs> I'm going normal. I have um, some some tools, but also I've got some uh, some. Sometimes things need to get wrecked. You know what I mean. Sometimes you've got a <laughs> yeah. machinery only you, response. You've invented yeah, an Barnaby. automatic wrecking machine. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> machinery only responds to a whack with a spanner. I found. So you don't have to tell me yet what you're carrying, Edvard. No, I know. I'm just um, um, explaining why I have a normal size load. I've got a few things with me. All right. Love it, uh, Zilla. What I'm you in. Got? I'm in rear with the gear, so I've got a huge pack of. Uh, well, you don't need to know what's in there, but I got a lot of. I got a lot of stuff. I like to come cool. prepared. I like to bring a lot of. Stuff. I don't like to pack light. <laughs> um, I have normal because I, I don't want to be too overloaded. I want to be nimble, but I don't want to be underprepared. <laughs> and Casimir. No, normal, please. Uh, right now, I'm going to make. Uh, the engagement role, which is the only role that I as the GM will make, uh, all being well in the game. <laughs> um, the way that this works and the way that all dice rolls work in Blades in the Dark is uh, I roll a d6. I will roll several uh, d6. That's kind of how you manipulate your chances in this game. Um, you sort of take more dice to roll to improve your odds of getting a good number. You roll all the dice and you take the highest results. That's the kind of standard way that dice rolls work in this. So to make the engagement roll, I take one d6 for sheer luck. Would we say that this is particularly bold and daring? I would say so. Um, you've never done a score together, so. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going for one of the most important people in the whole city. Which I love. Uh, so yeah, you get an extra dice. So well done, you've just improved your luck. Uh, does this expose a vulnerability or hit the target where it's weakest? I would say probably not. Mm -mm. Um, do you have any friends or contacts who can provide aid? Hmm. I'm sure I know some people who are um, uh, moving the same circles as the city councillors. Absolutely. I mean, you know, probably old friends from school, you know, lots of contacts. It's all networking, isn't it, basically? And um, It's who you know. Yeah, it's, it's who you know. It is. All right, I'll give you an extra die for that. So that makes three, uh, which I will roll now. So wish me luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. who need it. <laughs> uh -oh. um, what you got? Okay. What you got? Uh -oh. No, no. Don't worry. <laughs> do, do we Actually, not? Do worry. Are we not allowed to know? Uh, what okay, you my got? highest result there was a two. So wow. Whoa. Um, wow. The it's all right. The engagement roll skips us straight into the action. So here's where we are. Um, Edvard, smash cut your two. <laughs> smash cut two. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Smash cut two. Death row. New surround your Um <laughs> Edvard, you have deployed your line launcher from the uh, empty street mm. and you and Barnaby and Casimir have successfully made it up onto the roof. However, um, Lilith and... Wait, who's left? Who did I miss? Uh, Zilla. 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 Lilith and Zilla. Uh, you two, however, as the line launcher is handed to you, um, it malfunctions and sparks start flying out of it. In fact, it catches fire in your hands. Um, hey, careful you, with that. And <laughs> this is a piece of junk, I shout out. Piece of junk? It's a it's genius, it's on, brilliant invention that's gonna change on, the world. Stop setting it, it on fire. On, is it meant to be on fire? Cause it's on fire. Um, yes. Edvard, you're up on the roof and from where you are, you it's can see that a patrol features. of two blue coats uh, is heading uh, down the street. They've just turned a corner they will be able to see you in moments. Oh, uh, the police, I'm going now, I say. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, we should probably, yeah, uh, conceal ourselves from the from the police, right? 
Uh, is there a chimney or something? The street. We, yeah, is there a chimney we could sort of step behind? I'm sure these big townhouses have large sort of chimney stacks and things. Well, surely we're only visible at the edge of the roof. Let's just move into a position where we're not visible from the street. Sure. And then we can figure out our point of ingress. Hmm. You'll be absolutely fine. Uh, don't worry about that. It's Zilla and Lilith who should be worried. Um, right. Those blue coats are uh, approaching. One of them appears to be uh, sort of like peering through the murk in your direction. There's a lot of fog. Visibility is never good in Volisport, but um, nevertheless, what's this? One of them seems to be looking in your direction. Okay. Uh, okay. Is there like a basement level? Like, is the townhouse, does it go down some steps as well as like up to the front door? Is there a garden? You is tell there me. a wall? All right, well, there's a sub-basement, you know, like a split-level basement thing. So some kind of maybe servant's entrance down some steps into a kind of shadowy pit area below the main entrance of the townhouse. So we vault over a okay. low wall and down into the, you know, the, the sunken basement Sounds good. Basement so we're both... Uh, we're, we're both uh, is, um, Li uh, Lilith, is that working for you as well? Yeah, 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 I'm getting out of the way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hello, future Luke here. So the gang is about to make its first action roll and I didn't do a great job of explaining how this crucial mechanic works for the viewers at home, so here's the short version. Depending where a character's skills lie, they'll have a certain number of dots in each type of action. This is Casimir's sheet, you can see he's got two dots in Prowl, the sneaky so-and-so. So when Casimir performs a Prowl action, he gets to roll two d6s and take the best result. If you've got just one dot against an action, you roll 1d6, and if you've got no dots, you roll 2d6s and take the worst result. A 1, 2 or 3 on a roll is a fail, a 4 or a 5 is a success with a complication, and a 6 is a straightforward win. Rolling two sixes is a critical success. There are all sorts of ways you can get more dice to roll and improve your odds, like pushing yourself or getting help from another player, although these tend to cost stress, which I'll explain briefly while I've got you so we don't have to do any more of these interruptions later. As well as taking stress by adding dice to your rolls, your character can also take stress by resisting the consequence of an action to make that consequence less severe, or by doing flashbacks, which we will come onto in the adventure. If all your stress boxes get filled up, you take trauma, a permanent change to your character's personality. Oh, and one more thing before I go, I promise the last thing. In Blades, characters don't have hit points. They have these boxes which get filled with harm. Level one is minor, like a scratch. Level two is a bit more serious. Level three is real bad, for instance, a shadow leg, and level 4 isn't even on the sheet because it kills you. If you take, for instance, level 1 harm when all your level 1 slots are filled, it turns into level 2 harm. So if you take level 3 harm when the level 3 box is already full, you die. Uh oh. There are many, many other rules, but that's genuinely all you're going to need to set you up for the Blades in the Dark adventure ahead of you. Right, now past Luke wants to talk Lilith and Zilla through types of action roll, I think, so I'll let him crack on. There are 12, 12 kinds of roles you can do. Um, they sort of vaguely philosophically match up to the ones we're used to in D&D, &D, like um, uh, sleight of hand and nature and arcane and strength and stuff. They are attune, command, consort, finesse, hunt, prowl, skirmish, study, survey, sway, tinker, and wreck. And it is up to you, the players, to tell me which one you want to roll. All right, okay. I mean, and we get to choose separately? Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna go with survey. But you'll, but you'll have to roll separately. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with survey because, <laughs> um, yeah, survey. I've, I've shrewdly surveyed the situation and assessed that my best option is to hook the gear into the basement, you know, the area, the yard, and then huck myself after it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, um, and Lilith? I'm going to go for Prowl, because um, I have seen my colleague hoof her stuff <laughs> over there, and I'm going to try and slink after her as quickly as possible, follow her lead. Brilliant. So uh, make you both need to make me a roll now. Depending on how many dots in your character sheet you have in the particular roll yeah. you're trying to, make, trying to make, that's how many uh, dice you will be nice. rolling. Okay. All right. Do we have to tell you how many dots? Is that useful? Sorry. It would be polite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have I have one dot in Prowl, and I have just rolled a four. Okay. Very nice. I've got two dots in Survey, and I've got a six and a two. As the patrol comes closer, you can see that there are uh, three of them, and um, they've got a dog with them. Zilla, you have absolutely no problem hoofing your big bag o stuff um, over a wall uh, and down into the sort of split-level basement thing, so you're kind of now crouching out. You're not no longer visible from street level, um, which is great. Lilith, you slip into the shadows. 
Um, but as you do, you hear a sort of barking uh, start up from, from the dog, uh, and you hear the sound of paws kind of padding towards you. Like, this is because you rolled a four, which is a success with a complication. And the complication is padding its way over to you now. Um, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the blue coats, you can sort of hear them indistinctly shouting, What? 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 Right, what's up? They, they are calling Strange to the dog. Strange name for a dog. Is this... It- Am I allowed to flashback right now? How how big a deal oh, yeah. is it to flashback? Can I flashback? It, That's a you thing, can, right? Okay. Uh, in Blades in the Dark, brilliantly, you plan backwards. So you can call a flashback at any time that you like. As I think we're about... You know what? I'll explain how flashbacks go. As they go. You can call them at any time. So go for it. Okay. Well, we thought maybe there would be some kind of guard dogs inside the townhouse, you know, by way of security. So I, of course, packed a big juicy steak in my large bag my enormous bag of gear, right? So I reach into my enormous bag of stuff and take a steak out and just kind of huck it up the steps. So maybe the dog will catch that before us and and the guards will be like, well, that's weird they found a steak, but clearly that's what's distracted our dog. Brilliant. Uh, I love it. Let's roll for it. But uh, I will tell you that you are in a uh, controlled position here with potentially great effect. there's, uh, you know, in Blades you can kind of set uh, position and effects. We don't need to super go into it. It's more something that is happening kind of in my head behind the scenes. Um, but it's my way of basically communicating to you that uh, you're in a good position here. Um, so tell me how you would like to roll for it and and throw that stake. I guess it, I mean, sounds... <laughs> it's not a skirmish, is it? I'm not fighting it. <laughs> so uh, Depends how big the stake I, is. I guess it's a finesse roll, if I'm being honest. It's a finesse, isn't it? It's a kind of uh, gentle, yep. deft throw onto the upper steps leading up now, to Lilith, the street. Now, Lilith, if you want, you can help. Oh, yeah. yeah Are you I, any good at throwing, will, Lilith? Yeah, I'll help, I'll help you get some uh, g- a good good aim. Like, I'm pointing to, like, the right place, and I'm helping you, you aim towards it to, in order so okay. the dog gets to it without it seeing where we are. Like right. kind of just in the right position so that we're out of its line of sight when it finds the stake. But if I got no dots, what do I roll? Well, no dots means you would roll 2d6 and take the worst result. Uh. However, you have just been promoted to one dice because uh, Lilith is helping you, for which she takes one stress. <laughs> That's pretty stressful. It is pretty roll. stressful. Okay, so I roll one. You don't have to roll. No. I caused I just... this, so I'll take the stress. Okay, I roll one. It's a four? Great, okay. Uh, the You hear the stake sort of plop wetly onto the street uh, and the dog's paw prints, that, which are sort of beelining towards your location, they stop, you hear it sort of... And then you hear the sounds of a dog feistily chewing. Mm. Um, it is not a huge stake. And from the sound of the dog, it's real hungry. <laughs> uh, so I am going to do something now, which is called starting a clock, which is called dog oh. eats meat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I will show you it here. Oh, I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dog mm-hmm. eats meat. Yep. It sure does. This clock basically uh, counts up. I'll fill in sections when um, the dog is finished. You know, like works a quarter of the way through the meat that it's got um, and probably when it finishes that meat it's going to remember what it was doing before so that's where you're at but for now that dog is distracted solid nice one well, should we look around for a door yeah let's do that alright let's. Yeah. Uh, we, st- we study the sub-basement area for yeah. door windows points of ingress cat flaps that kind of thing there's a, uh, a coal chute um, where uh, coal nice. would be loaded in um, normally for the fires and such. Nice, 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 nice. I won't make you roll for, for that if you want to pop in there. Yeah, I'm going to clamber in feet first. <laughs> Which way first are you going in, <laughs> Zilla? <laughs> uh, assuming I fit in the coal chute. I don't know how big a coal chute is. Um, oh, it's pretty big. It's like okay. a, it, it, it's more of a, it's like a big set of um, like twin twin doors kind of oh kind nice of open yeah, up like yeah yeah that. rich house it's so that a person shoot. can get down with the coal not just so that coal can i was down. thinking of a shoot for coal <laughs> yeah okay. well i did say coal shoot so <laughs> 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 okay so yeah we, we um got him it's <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we um 
finagle our way into the coal chute. Fantastic. And, okay. Yeah, um, shimmy upwards at this point, or however coal chutes work. Uh, at this point, let's um, rejoin the action on the roof. Mm. It's got to be a window up here, right? I mean, well, big townhouse. Why, you, why don't you survey the scene? Yeah, all right. I will survey. I have a dot in surveying. Good at surveying things. Um, yeah. I'd like to survey the scene, please. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'm going to roll. It's a one. I failed to survey oh, the scene. Oh, Barnaby. <laughs> Can um, I resist okay, this, you... please? Yes, you can if you want. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, Wait, you can resist so your own crappy roll? You can resist the result. Oh, okay. of the okay. Well, tell me what the result so is. The result, of the, I, roll, I <laughs> no. the result of the roll. The result of the roll was going to be that all of the windows are painted shut. However, by resisting the con- that consequence, um, you <laughs> see that actually, now that you look closer, they are all painted shut apart from one which has a lock on it. It looks a little older. It's kind of like right on the end, like maybe when the people, the security people sort of painted all these windows shut with heavy duty security glue paint. <laughs> they, um, they, got to, they got bored before they got to that one. Um, if you're resisting that uh, consequence, then just make me a resistance roll. This is amazing. We're going through all the mechanics so quickly. <laughs> okay. when, you su- when you resist, your character suffers six stress. Minus the highest die result from the resistance oh, roll. Right. This is an insight resistance roll. So if you look at insight on your character mm-hmm. sheet, how many yeah. dots do you have total. in total in all of the insights? Just the one. <laughs> Just the one. Just the one. Mm. That's fine. So uh, roll me a d6 and you suffer stress minus that. Okay. Uh, that's a five. So just Brilliant. one stress. So that's, that's one stress. All right. Um, Barely even touches the sides. <laughs> And now you've identified hmm. a potential point of ingress. Ooh. I would like to study the lock because um, I think I might recognise the make. Uh, Casimir is hanging back at this point. He's kind of just like, just it's almost like wants to see how the how the rubes are getting on. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's a five. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you do know the make of the lock. It, it is, <laughs> it's an aster. <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew it's it! So widespread. <laughs> it's an Amadeus Aster. It's got a little, um, it's got like an A with a little A inside it. Uh, it's a very famous um, logo and it is a uh, electric lock. Mm-hmm. No, I've seen um, these. They're far inferior to the Lumiere locks that I tried to get on the market last year. But wouldn't you know it, he held a public demonstration where he fed a bunch of them to a penguin and the penguin died. <laughs> I like saying this guy's like, oh, I'm not buying those penguin killing locks. Anyway, you'll, you'll have these... to introduce me to this chap. He sounds like a riot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear about the penguin, mate. But in fairness, um, your locks aren't on these windows, so. Yeah, but these locks are easy to look. Let me just let me just get this open. Right. Child's play, Aster's stupid. Let me just tinker with this and get it open. Mm-hmm. Go for it. While you make that tinker roll with the lock, I'm filling in a dog eats meat. Oh, that's a five and a six. A five and a six. Fantastic work, uh, Edvard. Um, Yeah, you you flip out your own uh, sort of lock neutralizing. There it is. Uh, And yeah, do you describe to me how this looks? Um, Well, because of the shoddy workmanship of the the Astor brand lock, I basically just have to breathe on it and it springs open, falls on the (laughs) ground, and there's a tiny explosion and a sort of fart sound. It just goes... (laughs) I'm like, well, there you go. That's your Astor workmanship. Does everyone see now what I'm dealing with here? Thank you very much. Throw the window open. And no complication from that roll because of the six you rolled. I go angrily into the window. (laughs) (laughs) I crash furiously through a window. I might actually just be like, as you go to crash through, be like, hang on. Yes? Easy, Easy does it. Um, oh yes, no, like, of course, yes. I'd Sorry, like to lead a prowl group action, please. Hmm. Every about mechanic. The <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a masterclass. So, um, not a like, master. having spent time with Casimir, you'll you'll know that like, his he's got sort of like a shambling gait, and his brace makes quite a bit of noise. Um, but at this point, um. He's going to tuck his cane under his arm and there's just like a little lever on the brace which he turns and suddenly its joints start moving fluidly and silently 
and he kind of adopts a little crouch and he's still limping but it's not as pronounced as when his leg is like mechanically kept straight uh, and I want to just tease the window open I'm kind of imagining it's a sash it's um, a sash and then it's just, on a little bit of a slant but yeah oh yeah it's a sash and then just I it's want to like silently get in and then help the others with a, okay. a lovely prowl group action please so when we do a group action one brave player basically makes the role for everyone everyone who wants to be helped by that uh, person um, also rolls uh, we, this is a prowl role uh, is that mm -hmm. is that right um, Kazimir? okay so everybody rolls prowl if the best result that you get is uh, one two or three then for each time that happens Kazimir takes one stress but everyone so everyone benefits from the best result we get yeah. So okay. if I roll a crit, wonderful. But if you both roll a one, then I take two stress. Okay. Okay. What if I've got none in prowl? You take. Then you roll two and take the worst two result. Take yeah. the worst. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I got six and a three. So three is my worst result. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, yeah, I got a three and a four. Okay, I rolled a six. Fantastic. Uh, okay, here's what happens. Um, Casimir, you sort of very, very, ever so softly, kind of lift the sash window up um, and drop light as it you would never know that this what what is your leg the the brace what it's a kind of heavy is it metal right yeah 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 you would never know that it's that it's there as you sort of duck into a, a perfect crouch there is absolutely no sound whatsoever you point silently to a, a spot on the ground exactly where you landed uh, and Edvard hops down following you. Um, on that exact same spot. The floorboards do not creak there. Um, Barnaby uh, goes to make the same jump and tips headfirst uh, through the window. But I didn't spill my drink! Um, <laughs> Casimir, uh, with a look of panic, you reach up and somehow you get there in time, but you just catch him and just sort of manoeuvre him away from the... Um, the, <laughs> the stack of um, china plates <laughs> uh, heading towards in this room. Okay. Um, you are all in, and where are you exactly? Well, you are in the servants' quarters. As you look around, you see there are five or six beds. In each single one is a sleepy servant. Um, I'm, I straighten my leg up with a wince and re engage the brace, by the way. But it is cool. very much like a. I'm going to be feeling that tomorrow kind of thing. <laughs> so that's where you lot are. At this point, let's cut back to the basement. All right. Yay. <laughs> okay. So we've, we've um, emerged from the coal chute yeah. into the basement. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is a... Uh, there's there's not a lot um, happening down here. There's quite a lot of wine um, uh, against sort of one like wall it's fairly huge it's actually you've got the whole floor plan of the house here as in like the the, the entire footprint i should say of the mm. of the townhouse so it's a huge basement there is a wooden staircase against one wall at the back um that leads up and there are some other sort of like windows and stuff it, it kind of built into the wall that would take you back to street level or like out into the garden if you were to head out through those Okay. Okay. Can we flash back again? I got a taste for it now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Flashback to Ella's antiquities. What's it called? Le le Ella's totally largely legitimate. legal antiques. Largely legal antiques. We stood around uh, the planning table in the back room, and Barnaby has called on one of his Aristo mates that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. For um, I imagine Squiffy like, is brilliant. Brilliant chat. Squiffy. Squiffy. I imagine Love Barnaby him. persuaded Squiffy to kind of do a back of the envelope sketch of what oh, he yeah, remembered yeah. of the layout He's, of the interior. He was of having his an affair house. with with the councilman right. for a long time. Yes. He knows that place and like so, the back of his hand. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're pouring over the layout of this townhouse based on the hand drawn map from Squiffy. Yeah, great. Um, Lovely book. make uh, I, that feels like a. I mean, <laughs> it feels like this Barnaby should be taking this, but here we are. Um, you take 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 one stress for me, um, Zilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is that how it works when it's not that's really from dealing my place with Barnaby <laughs> and hearing about Swift? It's one. You take it's one, one stress if you're asking for something a bit outrageous. It's two stress if you're asking for something super outrageous. Okay. You can still ask for it. 
It's Never pretty, don't it's ask pretty for it. outrageous. Okay. You can have whatever you want. You just you but you there are you get punished in the stress and you still have to roll for it. Okay. So Squiffy, he sounds like a reliable sort of architectural artist. Let's find out how good Squ- Squiffy's <laughs> drawing, um, is. Stress. drawing is. Stress. Feeling that stress. What kind of role is this? Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it's so many things. Things and things. Um, okay. It could be consort. Could be, yeah, I guess it's consort because it's... Could be it's study. A... Oh, yeah, actually. Well, I mean, if we have the map in hand, then it's it's studying the map for like the best route and the possible yeah. location. Trying to decipher probable, the drawing. Yeah, trying to yeah. decipher the drawing, trying to figure out where you would store a precious antiquity or like a safe or a, you know, That sounds whatever. more than fair. Okay, so um, it's a study roll. I don't have any dots in study, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but um, I'll Someone roll two. I, uh, I have two in study. Yes. <laughs> what, do you th- what do you remember, Lilith, from that swap. time we were looking at the map? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I really um, enjoy looking at maps. Like, any any kind of documents I'm really, like, inspired by. I, I found that uh, Squiffy's handwriting was particularly intriguing. Um, he was the, hammered at the he, time, probably. Yeah, Hence like, the there, name was, Squiffy. There, there was a hint, like, a hint of uh, calligraphy in there. Like, he's obviously been taught well at uh, the school that he went to, but um, it was a little bit wobbly. But... I, I, I had fun deciphering uh, his various labels. Sounds yeah. good to me. All right, so I'm going to roll two and take the lower because I'm not very good no, at studying. No, if uh, Lilith is helping you, then you roll one. One. She's oh yeah, like last time. You could also have. I mean, Lilith, you could just roll this if you want. Yeah, yeah. I might roll this. this. I'll roll this for two. Yeah. Well, in that case, okay. why, why doesn't Lilith roll for it? Because it seems yeah. more like her wheelhouse than mine. Okay. For sure. That's a one and a two. <laughs> okay. Uh, you pull out Squiffy's um, whiskey-stained map. Um, it is almost com- it is almost completely illegible. It's like a child's drawing of a house um, <laughs> with the, the smoke coming out the chimney and stuff. <laughs> with the smoke coming out the chimney, and he's actually drawn oh, a picture no. of his family out front. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, which is nice, Aww. like little stick figures. It's real sweet. I mean, it's the real children real might be word. his. We don't know, do we? That's the <laughs> hilarious yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, Squiffy hasn't drawn in all of his children. <laughs> <laughs> Just the acknowledged ones. Um, so on this drawing, uh, what you can see uh, is that it is split into... The house bit is split into four. And he has actually a neat handwriting labelled exactly what each floor is. You can see... Um, that uh, the basement isn't on this because it's a terrible map, but you can see that uh, the 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 lowest floor that he's written, living. He's written the word living, and then you can see on the uh, top floor he's written uh, servos, which is his <laughs> uh, cruel slang term for servants. Um, classic Squiffy, what a lad! And um, he has also labelled floors two and three, but he was so happy with his drawing that he signed it obnoxiously largely and his signature goes across uh, the writing uh, classic squiffy <laughs> yeah I can't believe we thought this map would help right floors two and three are, are, a, are a question mark it looks like we're heading up at least a couple of floors we're yeah. not going to the I, it's not going to be the living room but it means we've got to get through the living room mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. meanwhile I'm wondering why Barnaby just said ha ha classic squiffy <laughs> yeah, we, we share a lot. Just remembering some good times from yeah. school. To be fair, at quite regular intervals, Barney, Barnaby says, ha ha, classic Squiffy. <laughs> As he remembers one of Squiffy's classic japes. Oh, oh, um. That is classic Squiffy. <laughs> Zillow, go. Seems like the kind of place that'd have a dumbwaiter. Do yeah, dumbwaiters go to basements? I, the that's... kitchens. Where are the kitchens? Are they in the basement? Sorry, Lily. There's a dumbwaiter. Yes. All right. How big is it? Can we get in it? <laughs> you can get in it one at a time. Mm. Okay. Well, shall I shall I sneak in it and go up and have a look? I could send you up. I could send you up. Yeah. Yeah. It's whether it's whether it just goes up into the kitchens or whether it perhaps goes up further into like a bedroom in a really fancy place. But we, Squiffy's Matt didn't tell us that, so it's got to go. It's got to at least go to a dining room. Otherwise, what's the point of a yeah, 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 a yeah, waiter, right? Yeah. Or even the ki- if if there's one here, it'll go up somewhere useful. 
over by the dumbwaiter, which is kind of in, in the wall, um, there is some, like, it, it's actually fairly light. For a house this size, it's it's not as much of a kitchen as you would actually expect. But mm. there are, there is, like, you know, there are sort of boxes of vegetables and there is a big, long table, like in Downton Abbey, that you can imagine all the servants sort of stand around and do their cookery. Complain about the rich people. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, Lilith. Yeah. How do you feel about enclosed spaces? I'm okay with them. Just it's little fine. Boxes. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll if you're not afraid in. of ghosts. You're not going to be afraid of. I mean, no. That's my assumption. So. Yeah. Well, if I get is... stuck, I can ask a ghost to help me. So it's fine. Can you I've do got that? Even more people to ask. Yeah. Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah. I don't. Really, I don't really know much about ghosts. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Truly, we none of us truly know enough about ghosts hence hence my studies but I, I won't go into that now because we're in the middle of a heist so. <laughs> way, um, way above my pay grade yeah. <laughs> which is um, nothing at the moment Zilla <laughs> you're it's minus eight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. everything is above my pay grade Zilla you're so big and strong I don't think you need to Would roll fit. for oh uh, in the for, for, for okay. operating a dumbwaiter that has yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. that has Lilith in it mm-hmm. yeah. so this is happening Lilith in the dumbwaiter yeah yeah okay. good luck yeah it's not automatic there's a kind of rope thing you have to pull mm. um, you pull it um, Lilith uh, the sort of small amount of light that there is kind of slips away as you kind of enter the um, the, the dumbwaiter lift shaft uh, for about sort of 10 seconds you are winched upwards and then you feel a kind of dunk as the as the uh, the box kind of reaches its zenith, and you can see out of you now, you are looking into. It's a sort of larder. It's a, it looks like a small food preparation area, and there's a there's an open door actually that you can see through there that leads through to a very opulent dining room that is empty. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would like to have a little look around and uh, st- study the area to see if there's there's anyone around. Um, if there's any servants who might not be asleep in the in the servos quarter <laughs> upstairs. Sure. Uh, well, yeah. What kind of role will that be, do you reckon? Um, I think uh, I'll go for either study or survey. I'll go for study. I'll study. I'll take, take that extra dice. I'm going to have a little. Or is that a fudge? Go yeah. for it. Okay. If you can it argue went... it well enough, it's not a fudge. Ah, okay. Well, I'm I'm really I'm looking real hard, and I'm looking at um. <laughs> there's there's I, I'm gonna try and see if there's like a a thing at the thing where they they sign whether the the kitchen's recently been cleaned and who did the last shift. So I'm gonna look oh, for yeah. one of those. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I got a three and a one. Okay. Um. You're sick you on do... the rotor. <laughs> 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 oh. Uh, you do um, find the rotor. It is on top of a tall boy. You know, one of those like wooden sort of uh, bits of furniture that's kind of very tall. It's like a tall cabinet thing. <laughs> you can see a clipboard kind of poking off the edge. You have to get on tiptoes up to get it, though. And as you do, you get it, but you just slip and fall into a kitchen set. And a little teacup just wobbles off and goes... <gasps> and breaks on the floor um, and uh-huh. from <laughs> two floors above you you can hear some kind of in, in fact you can't hear anything but uh, everyone in the attic where the servants quarter is you see um, you see some of the servants kind of stirring restlessly in their beds uh, one of them starts to mutter about no my lady it's, it ain't time for breakfast yet <laughs> nobody wakes up but I'm starting another clock um, called uh, Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Can Volusport's newest master criminals possibly make it through the Morriston townhouse undetected? Will they get their hands on the priceless artifact? And what's this about a curse? Find out tomorrow in the gripping conclusion, right here on Outside Extra. 